Hey, Gemini. This is your astral tarot reading for the month of November. And there's going to be a whole lot of stuff going on with love. Lots of love. Lots of thoughts with love for you this month. Your ruler, Mercury, is going to go retrograde. And that's going to allow you to rethink some matters. But let me tell you what's going to happen at the very start of the month with that new moon. On the first, into your house of work. I'm going to give you a general reading for the month. And let's see what's going on for you. Gemini, regarding your work situation, confusion. How is your, how is your work situation right now? Is there confusion in work? You know, there can be a push right now with the new moon to make a new direction, take a new direction, make a new decision, you know, to figure out what it is that you need to do to stop this confusion because it's bringing you a lot of, lot of insecurity. It's like you're not sure what it is that you need to do. Where is the confusion coming from? You don't know. And why are people trying to make you unhappy or cause you a lot of stress? Let's get some clarity cards on the new moon. On the first, in your house of work, and what it is that you need to know. Some more clarity cards. Here we go. Friendship. Okay, this is definitely dealing with co-workers. So there's somebody on your job that's not a friend, or you want them to be a friend, or you may need to make some deeper friendships or closer friendships. You got to get a support team, people to watch your back. So consider making friends or getting closer to one or two co-workers that can tell you things that let you, to help you, so to help you in terms of knowing what is going on and to alert you when things are not well. This gets some uh, clarity cards on what can happen on your job around that new moon. On the first, top of the month, what is it that can happen that you need to know? Clarity cards. Okay. First of all, whatever they're doing, you're going to overcome it, you know, because you're smart enough. Let's not forget Jupiter, the planet of opportunities is in your sun sign. So you got good momentum, you got good luck, and you're going to work it out. And whatever they do, they cannot defeat you. So what you got to do is that you just have to handle everything with grace that comes your way. And don't allow them to stress you the heck out, Gemini. Okay, on the second, Mercury, your ruler, enters into your house of love. What is going on with your love life? Let's see what is going on with your love life, Gemini. Here we go. Okay. Oh, you got the lover's cards here. Okay. Um, but you don't seem to be happy. What's going on with your love life? Okay. There can be a need to get a better understanding in your love life because you got the lover's cards here, but it's kind of upside down. The upside down cards mean that things may not be going well between you and a certain person or the situation that you want to happen may not be going the way you would like it to go. And you have decided that, you know, you may want to uh, kind of stick with this because this card was retrograde. You may want to stick with this and not let it go. You may want to put a little bit more time in it. Let's get some clarity cards in terms of Mercury, your ruler, and your house of love starting on the second. And it says to meditate and contemplate. You got to think about what it is that you need to do. What is it that you need to do with the situation or with this person, with this matter? Since you're not really ready to let it go, you're going to be giving more time, more energy to it. You're going to think about what is the right direction for you. And it says here, it says here that you need to go ahead and, okay, well, also more intuition, more intuition. Let's get another card here. More intuition is needed. And so you, if there's chance that you and this person have something good going on and something has disrupted this relationship, it says a time for healing. You may give it a little time to heal. Let's give it another card here. Another card here. Okay, one more card in terms of clarity. It says, have faith in your dreams. If you want, so maybe you want this to happen, or maybe you're just tired of it. But whatever it is, you are not going to be moving on it fast. I do know that on the 25th, Mercury is going to go retrograde. And it's going to allow you to reevaluate, re rethink what's going on between you and a certain person or what your plans are for the future regarding a love relationship. Now, let me just say this to you, that on the 3rd, there is going to be a standoff between Mars and Pluto in your house of the mind. But before I get to that, Gemini, can you do me a favor? If you like my videos, can you go ahead and like and subscribe so I can bring more of them to you? Please like and subscribe. Thank you. Now, okay, major drama, major drama. Mars, the planet of war, faces off with Pluto, the planet of control. Who wins in this? It causes conflicts. It causes drama. It causes arguments. And what is going on? It's about that, you know, talking to people, information. So you're going to be, when you want to talk, 
You want to tell things. And Pluto was saying, you know what? You may not be, you know, it may not have the right information. You may be dispersing wrong information. You may be talking to the wrong people. Let's get some information on what can happen when Mars faces off with Pluto in your house of the mind. It says clarity of belief. So your beliefs are going to be tested. There is going to be a major struggle of maintaining what you know versus what you need to know. And if you need to have, be, have an open mind in terms of allowing new information to come in, to clarify things for you, to move you in a better direction mentally, for you not to be closed-minded and, and talking about things you don't know about. You may talk about things that are untrue, have false information. Let's get another card about Mars and Pluto on the third. And there could be some conversations. Woo! You can have some arguments with people. It says you got to use your third eye. This is your meditation. You know, you got to use that third eye. Your in intuition, you intuition. Meditate before you talk. Think before you talk. You know, use your third eye. You know, your intuition. What is your intuition telling you about a certain person, about a certain conversation? And the third card is have control over your mouth. <laughs> Don't get carried away. Control. Don't get carried away in arguments that you can't win. Or you, this, or you just want to talk. You just want to argue. Mars can be very argumentative because Mars wants to win. And Pluto was saying, well, wait a minute. You're not dealing with the right stuff and you know you're you you know you are dealing with wrong information and you need to seek out better information and think differently. Have a different method of communicating with people because it is not working for you, Gemini. It is not working for you. But let me just say there's going to be some money issues coming up because on the 11th, Venus. Yes, Venus the planet of love and attraction and money. Venus is the planet of money, too, is going to be entering into your house of finances, long-term finances. And let's see what's going to happen here. What's going on with your long-term finances, Gemini? Long-term finances. Well, one thing I don't like, I don't like this card. Somebody trying to take something from you. You know, you got to be very mindful. Do you have a business partnership with somebody? You better be careful. Keep an eye on them. Or keep an eye on the books. Or keep an eye on the money. Keep your eye on the money, Gemini. Or you may not be getting what you deserve or getting what you're worth. People are hold, withholding your money. Or they're shortcutting you in some kind of way. Are you in an intimate partnership where the two of you share resources? Keep your eye on the money. They may, may, they may not be quite uh, accurate with the books. It may not be purposeful. But they may not be good with balancing and budgeting. And because of it, it causes a lot of stress in your relationship. Whatever that might be. But you want to grow your money. You don't want your money to be leaving you. You want to build wealth. And let's get some clarity cards on Venus, the planet of money. Entering into your house of money on the 11th. Okay, to have, so this is a love relationship. What is going on with your love relationship right now? So the cards are saying, you got to keep an eye. Are you sharing resources? This could be family too. You can have family members that are always got their hands out. They always need some money. They can never pay their bills. Their rent is always due. Here they come. Just make sure that they're not taking advantage of you. Okay? It's okay to be, you know, kind to your family, but you got to have boundaries. Okay? Now. Let's get one more clarity card on Venus entering into your house of relationship. And you got to have perspective on things. You know, just not accept what people say. You got to think about it. It's like, hmm, if I do this now, is this going to help them in the long run? Or is this going to hurt me in the long run? Perspective. One more card on Venus in your house, money of attraction, in your house of long-term money. And it says, unfoldment me that, you know, you can be a little generous with people. You can go ahead and be a little generous with people, but definitely have some boundaries and know exactly what you're dealing with. And don't be, you know, moving around in the dark or the unknown. You know, you know, if something's going on, just know that it's going on so that you can better protect yourself or know how to handle things. Yes. Now, on the 15th, there is a full moon. Woo! That full moon is in your house of spirituality, spiritual growth, spiritual empowerment. What does that mean? Your intuition is going to be stronger than ever before. Now, we deal, we already know that you're a very discerning person, that your mind is sharp, but you're going to have the added power of that full moon on the 15th giving you more intuitive abilities, yes. And where the where, and it's, it could be regarding a relationship regarding money. 
you know, how to, you know, how to handle money, how to grow more money, what to do with your money. You got all these money cards. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of chances for you to think about your money. Or an issue can come up during the full moon regarding your money that catches you off guard, catches you off guard. So let's get some clarity cards regarding that full moon on the 15th. What information might that full moon on the 15th be bringing your way? It says do some kind of movement. This is regarding, this is some kind of, now this is regarding a love situation and money, okay? A love situation and money. It's always about partnership and, and money with you. This could be a business partnership, or this can actually be doing something that you love to do with your money. You could be moving around and getting more information and more activity. One more card. It says giving and receiving, giving and receiving. Now, let me say this to you. We had talked about charity, charity with family, charity with loved ones, giving and receiving. So, you know, just be very mindful of that. One more card about that full moon is that you're going to change your focus. Change your focus on what, Gemini? Change your focus on what? Let's get some more clarity cards. Change your focus on what? Change your focus on, okay, the thing is, is that you, you, you might move too fast. The cards are saying slow down. This card is saying, don't be taken advantage of. And just because you feel as though it might be the right thing to do, you got to give it some, you got to you put some discernment with this and allow your intuition to tell you what to do because that is the power of the full moon on the 15th is to have more intuitive abilities and to grow your intuitive abilities, yes. So on the 15th, also on the 15th, 15th is a busy, busy day. We got Saturn, the planet of discipline, the planet of karma, the planet of rewards, the planet of lessons. What happens? It goes direct and it goes direct in your career sector. It goes direct in your career sector. Wow. What does that mean? That means you're going to get something you deserve. Okay. You are going to get something that you deserve. And let's see what's going on with this. Oh, wow. Okay. Very interesting. These are interesting cards in terms of your career. What does it mean? Okay, first of all, the strength card. So what happens is that Saturn, you, listen, you've been beaten up regarding your career. You've been working hard. You are determined to reach your career goals and Saturn's going to help you. You are not giving up. You see the money. You see the money. You see the rewards. And you want the rewards. You want the rewards, Gemini. Okay. Okay. But you gotta have big, you gotta have great greater balance. You gotta have greater balance when it comes to how to do things and not burn yourself out. One more thing, though, one more thing is that do me a favor. You have to make sure that you're following the rules. You know, shortcuts are not gonna be working for you regarding your career path. You got to follow the rules and do things the way you're supposed to do them. Okay? Now, the nine of pentacles is a wonderful card. Is that you gonna the money, the, your effort? Your efforts will pay off. Your efforts will pay off. And the sun card is that things are going to grow for you. Woo! Things are going to grow for you in your career, Gemini. They're going to grow for you in your career. Let's get another clarity card in terms of what can happen when Saturn, the planet of discipline and rewards, moves into your career sector. It says dedicated effort. Yes, go ahead. Stay dedicated. Work hard is going to pay off for you. Work hard is going to pay off for you. Now, okay, this is good, but we got to get back to that love thing. That love thing is not going to be going away, okay? On the 25th, well, on the 25th, the sun, on the 21st, the sun moves into, it's going to move into your house of relationships, and it's going to, uh, you're going to want more growth, more growth. More growth to come. Yeah, more growth to come. But before I do this for you, Gemini, can you do me a favor? If you like my videos, can you click like and subscribe so I can bring more of them to you? Yes. On the 25th, Mercury Retrograde also enters into your house of relationships and allows you to rethink things. What is going on in love? Do you want to be with this certain person? Do you want to make changes with this person? Do you want to make changes all together in love? You may not want to be with this person. There may have been some disappointments for you. You know, it's like, you got, well, the thing is, that I, got, I got my options. I'm going to see what my options are, okay? You have had love in the past, or you have loved this person in the past. Are you looking for love? You are looking for love, okay? You want to start something new right now or have a new path with a person. But you want a person that's got, that's got clarity of mind. 
You want a person that has clarity of mind and a person that is passionate. Whatever or whoever that might be. And the Nine of Cups is saying that you get what you want with the right decisions and the right choices. Love can definitely come your way. Gemini, love can definitely come your way this month. So Gemini, this has been your Astro Tarot reading for the month of November. And if you'd like to know what else is going on in your your chart, you can contact me at KimAllen.com. That is KimAllen.com.